Not only do Southern Baptists go out, lots of churches go out throughout the world proclaiming the gospel. So I'm going to say, first of all, as a representative of our International Mission Board, say thank you for your forgiving and your praying and going from Jerusalem to Judea to Samaria to the utmost parts of the world. This is emotional time. <laughs> the, uh, I didn't ask this earlier, the technicians, but they would put on the first 
slide uh, while I'm bringing the word from the Lord. And then after I bring you the word of the Lord, the Lord uh, my wife is going to come and share a little bit about our 29 years in Guyana. And uh, then after that, we're going to close with a, a great video from the International Mission Board. And uh, there'll be, be two small clips. One will be a presentation about Are We There Yet? And the other will be a musical I think you'll enjoy as it uh, focuses upon that theme of reaching out. Let us God get through prayer. Father, I just want to say thank you today for this opportunity to stand before your people and proclaim your word magnify your son Jesus Christ. And so Lord, we ask that you would bless in what we're trying to do because our desire is to honor you. And again, we say thank you for the salvation that we have in Jesus Christ. Thank you for your presence with us always, for your power. And the purpose that you to our lives as we live from day to day wherever we might be living. That we always might be faithful witnesses of yours in every circumstance of life. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. After Jesus returned to the Father, God fulfilled his promise and he poured out his spirit upon those followers of Jesus. And they received power, power to be his witnesses. And they began in Jerusalem. They scattered through Judea, Samaria, to the utmost parts of the earth. As the church began, it grew rapidly. On that day of Pentecost, there were 3,000 that were added to the church. And then later, it grew to 5,000, and the number continued to grow. Then there was a wave of persecution that came upon the church after the stoning of Stephen. And most of the believers in Jerusalem fled. They went in many directions. Some of them went up north to Syria, to the town of Antioch. And there a new church began. And the church in Jerusalem sent Barnabas up to Syria, to Antioch, to encourage the church, to help disciple the church. And Barnabas needed some additional help, and so he went and he got Saul, who had been chosen by the Lord to be the Apostle Paul, as we know him. And he came there to Antioch of Syria to assist Barnabas at the church. So among the leaders at the church of Antioch was Barnabas, and Simeon, and Lucius, and Manion, and Saul. And as they were worshiping the Lord one day and fasting, the Lord said to them to dedicate Barnabas and Saul because God had a special work for them to do. And so after more prayer and fasting, they laid their hands on Paul and Barnabas and sent them on their way. They began their journey. They left. Syria, Antioch of Syria, and traveled westward, crossed a piece of the Mediterranean Sea to the island of Cyprus. And there in that port city of Salamis, they began to proclaim the word of the Lord in the synagogues there. And then they journeyed westward from town to town, proclaiming God's word until they got to the western side of Paphos. There they met a Jewish man. He was a sorcerer. He was a false prophet. He was attached to the governor there. His name was uh, Sergius Paulus. Uh, the governor was a man of considerable insight and understanding. And he had invited Paul and Barnabas to come and visit him because he wanted to hear the word of the Lord. But Elimus tried to, to persuade the governor not to listen to what Paul and Barnabas had to say. He tried to turn the governor away from the Christian faith. 
Apostle Paul being filled with the Holy Spirit. He looked evilness in the eyes. And he said, you, you son of the devil, you're full of all kinds of trickery and evil. You're against everything that is good. And now the hand of the Lord is upon you to punish you. And you will be stricken with blindness for a while. And suddenly darkness came upon evil and sin. He began to beg for people to guide him around by the hand. And when the governor saw that, he was amazed. He believed. And he was amazed at the things that he had learned about the Lord Jesus Christ. Then Paul and Barnabas and those that were traveling with him left the island of Cyprus, Pathos, and traveled northward to the mainland, to Pamphylia, to a port city called Pergamon. There, the, the young fellow, John Mark, who had been assisting him, left them and went back to Jerusalem. And they continued northward into Pamphylia to another town, also called Antioch. And there on the synagogue, and there on the Sabbath day, they went to the synagogue to worship, to the services there. They listened to the reading from the books of Moses and reading from the books of the prophets. And then those that were in charge of the service asked Paul and Barnabas if they had a word of encouragement to come and to share it with them. So as Paul stood before them, he raised his hands to quieten the people and began to share with them this message. He said, the God of our ancestors, the God of the nation of Israel has chosen our ancestors and he calls them to multiply while they were in Egypt. He blessed them, caused them to prosper. Then God powerfully delivered them out of Egypt during their time of slavery. And he put up with them for 40 years and he cared for them during that time when they were in the wilderness. Then God destroyed seven nations in the land of Canaan and gave their land as, a, as, an inheritance to, as an inheritance to the people of Israel. It all took place over about a period of 450 years. Then the people were ruled by judges until the time of Samuel, the prophet. Then the people asked, begged God for a king. And so God gave them a king, Saul, son of Kish of the tribe of Benjamin. He ruled for about 40 years. Then God removed him from his kingship and replaced him with David. David, about whom God said, he's a man after my own heart. He'll do everything I want him to. Well, it was one of the descendants of David, Jesus, who is God's promised Savior of Israel. But before, excuse me, I always have a time of blanking out, don't you? It was one of King David's descendants, Jesus, who is God's promised Savior of Israel. But before Jesus came, God sent a man by the name of John the Baptist, the prophet. And God told John to preach to the people of Israel to turn from their sins and turn to God and to be baptized. Then at the end of John's ministry, he asked the people if they thought he was that Messiah that was to come, that promised one. He said, I'm not that one, but he's coming very soon. And I'm not even worthy to be his slave. Then Paul addressed the, the, the community and said, you sons of Abraham and you who are devout uh, Jew, Gentiles who fear the, the God of Israel. He said, this salvation is...